Chapter 21, Last Day. Charlotte and Will were alone. The families had gone to look for Fern. Templeton was asleep, and Wilbur lay resting after the excitement and strain of the ceremony. His medal still hung at his neck. By looking, by looking out of the corner of his eye, he could see it. Charlotte said Wilbur after a while, Why are you so quiet? I like to sit still, she said. I've always been rather quiet. Yes, but you seem especially quiet today. Do you feel all right? A little tired, perhaps, but I feel peaceful. Your success in the ring this morning was, to a small degree, my success. Your future is assured. You will live, secure and safe, Wilbur. Nothing can harm you now. These autumn days will shorten and grow cold. The leaves will shake loose from the trees and fall. Christmas will soon come in the snows of winter, and you will live to enjoy the beauty of the frozen world. You... For you mean a great deal to Zuckerman, and he will not let any harm come to you, ever. Winter will pass, and days will lengthen, and the ice will melt in the pasture of the pond. The song of the sparrow will return and sing, and frogs will awake and warm with the warm wind when it blows again. All these sights and sounds and smells will be yours to enjoy, Wilbur. This lovely world, these precious days. Charlotte stopped. A moment later, a tear came to Wilbur's eye. Oh, Charlotte, he said, to think that when I first met you, I thought you were cruel and bloodthirsty. When he recovered from his emotion, he spoke again. Why did you do this all for me? He asked. You, I don't deserve it. I've never done anything for you. You have been my friend, replied Charlotte. That in itself is a tremendous thing. I wove my web for you because I liked you. After all, what's life anyway? We're born, we live a little, and we die. A spider's life can't be help, help being a little something of a mess with all its trapping and eating flies. By helping you, perhaps I was trying to lift up a little, lift it up, lift up my life a trifle. Heaven knows anyone's life can stand a little of that. Well, said Wilbur, I'm not good at making speeches. I haven't got my gift for wor gift for words like you. But you saved me, Charlotte, and I would greatly, I would gladly give my life for you. I really would. I'm sure you would, and thank you, and I thank you for your ge generous sentiments. Charlotte and Will, Charlotte said Wilbur, we're all going home today. The fair is almost over. Won't it be beautiful to be back at home in the barn cellar again? With the sheep and the geese, aren't you anxious to get home? For a moment, Charlotte said nothing. Then she spoke in a low voice, so Wilbur could hardly hear the words. I will not be going back to the barn, she said. Wilbur leapt to his feet. Not going back, he cried. Charlotte, what are you talking about? I'm done, I'm done for, she replied. In a day or two, I will be dead. I haven't even enough strength to climb down into the crate. I doubt if I have enough silk to spin a spinnerets to lower myself to the ground. Hearing this, Wilbur threw himself down in an agony of pain and sorrow. Great sobs racked his body. He heaved and he grunted with desolation. Charlotte, he moaned, Charlotte, my true friend, come now, let's not make a scene, said the spider. Be quiet, Wilbur, stop thrashing about. But I can't stand it, shouted Wilbur. I won't leave you here alone to die. If you're going to stay here, I shall stay here too. Don't be ridiculous, said Charlotte. You can't stay here. Zuckerman and Lurby and John Arable and the others will be back any minute now, and they'll shove you into the crate, and away you'll go. Besides, it wouldn't make any sense for you to stay. There will be no one to feed you. The fairgrounds will soon be empty and deserted. Wilbur with, was in a panic. He raced around and around his pen. Suddenly he had an idea. He thought of an egg sack and the 514 little spiders that would hatch in the spring. If Charlotte herself was unable to come to the barn, then at least I must take her children along. Wilbur rushed to the front of his pen. He put his feet on the ground and on the top board and grazed around. In the distance, he saw the Arables and the Zuckermans approaching. He knew he would have to act quickly. Where's Templeton, he demanded. He's in the corner under the straw asleep, said Charlotte. Wilbur rushed over and pushed his, his strong snout under the rat and tossed him into the air. Templeton, screamed Wilbur, pay attention. The rat, surprised out of a sound sleep, looked first dazed and disgusted. What kind of monkey shine is this, he growled. Can a rat, rat catch a wink of sleep without suddenly being popped into the air? Listen to me, cried Charlotte. Wilbur, Charlotte is very ill. She only has a short time to live. She cannot accompany us home because of her condition. Therefore, it is absolutely necessary that I take her egg sack with me. I can't reach it, and I can't climb. You're the only one that can get it. There's not a second to lose. The people are coming, and they'll be here in no time. Please, 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 Templeton, climb up and get the egg sack. The rat yawned and straightened his whiskers. Then he looked up at the egg sack. So, he said in disgust, so it's old Templeton to the rescue again, is it? Templeton, do this. Templeton, do that. Templeton, please run down to the dump and get me a magazine clipping. Templeton, please lend me a piece of string so I can spin a web. Oh, hurry, said Wilbur. Hurry up, Templeton. But the rat was in no hurry. He began to Im imitating Wilbur's voice. So it's hurry up, Templeton, is it, he said. 
Ho, ho. And what thanks do I ever get for these services? I would like to know. Never a kind word for old Templeton. Only abuse and wisecracks and side remarks. Never a kind word for a rat. Templeton, said Wilbur in desperation. If you don't stop talking and get busy, all will be lost and I will die of a broken heart. Please climb up. Templeton lay back in the straw. Lazily, he placed his four paws behind his head and crossed his knees in an attitude of complete relaxation. Die of a broken heart, he mimicked. How touching. My, my. I noticed that it's always me you would come to when in trouble, but I've never heard anyone's heart breaking from my account. Oh, no. Who cries anything? Rolled Templeton. Get up, screamed Wilbur. Stop acting like a spoiled child. Templeton grinned and lay still. Who made trip after trip to the dump, he asked. Why, it was old Templeton. Who saved Charlotte's life by scaring away the terrible boy with a rotten goose egg? Bless my soul, I believe it was old Templeton. Who bit your tail and got you back on your feet this morning after you fainted in front of the crowd? Old Templeton, has it ever occurred to you that I'm sick of running errands and doing favors? What do you think I am, anyway? A rat of all work? Wilbur was desperate. The people were coming and the rat was failing him. Suddenly he remembered Templeton's fondness for food. Templeton said, I'll make you a solemn promise. Get Charles eggs out for me, and from now on, I will let you eat first when Lurvy slops me. I will let you have your choice of everything in the trough, and I won't touch anything until you're through. The rat sat up. You mean it? He said. I promise. I cross my heart. All right, it's a deal, said the rat. He walked up the wall and started to climb. His stomach was still swollen from last night's gorge. Groaning and complaining, he pulled himself slowly to the ceiling. He crept along the tall till he reached the egg sack. Charlotte moved aside for him. She was dying, but she still had enough strength to move a little. Then, Templeton bared his long, ugly teeth and began snipping the threads that fastened the egg sack to the ceiling. Wilbur watched from below. Here's Templeton next to Charlotte. Use extreme care, he said. I don't want a single one of those eggs harmed. The stuff kicked in my mouth, complained the rat. It's worth, worth than cotton candy. But Templeton worked, worked away at the job and managed to cut the egg sack to drip and carry it to the ground where he dropped it in front of Wilbur. Wilbur heaved a great sigh of relief. Thank you, Templeton, he said. I will never forget this as long as I live. Neither will I, said the rat, picking his teeth. I feel as suit as though I'd eaten a spool of thread. Well, home we go. Templeton crept into the crate and buried himself in the straw. He got out of sight just in time. Lurvy and John Arable and Mr. Zuckerman came along at the moment, followed by Mrs. Arable, Mrs. Zuckerman, and Avery and Fern. Wilbur had already decided that he would carry the egg sack. There was only one possible way. He carefully took the little bundle in his mouth and held it there on the tip of his tongue. He remembered what Charlotte had told him, that the sack was waterproof and strong. It felt funny on his tongue and it made him drool a bit. And of course, he couldn't say anything. But as he was being shoved into the crate, he looked up at Charlotte and gave her a wink. She knew he was saying goodbye in the only way he could. And after her, and she knew her children were safe. Goodbye, she whispered. Then she summoned all her strength and waved her front legs at him. She moved. She never moved again. Next day, as the Ferris wheel began to be taken apart and the racehorses were being loaded into the vans and entertainers were packing up their belongings and driving away in the trailer, Charlotte died. The fairgrounds were soon deserted and the, shed, the sheds and buildings were empty and forlorn. The infield was littered with bottles and trash. Nobody of hundreds of people that had visited the fair knew that a gray spider had played the most important part of all. No one was with her when she died. Oh, that one gets me every time. Chapter 22, A Warm Wind.